This is AEDT 1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technology, Module 1, Video Clip 1.2, Developing Our Online Community. Welcome to our first module of the course. In this module, we will examine the features of community that are important for successful learning environments. We'll also be taking a look at our norms for the class and introducing ourselves this week in tutorial. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Describe what elements are key to developing online communities. How will asynchronous and synchronous learning impact our community? What special talents, skills, or motivation do you bring to the online community? What are the advantages or disadvantages of online learning environments? Will technology shape our learning community and our emotional response to learning, or will we? Each week, I will invite you to share a digital moment that expresses how you're doing in the course or what is happening in your professional or personal life that week. This digital snapshot may take the form of pictures, words, or video clips. Feel free to be creative. This is how we will log our journey together in this learning community, and my goal is to empower you to create your niche in our learning web. What are our community norms? In face-to-face -face classes, there are several key points developed by Gibbs through the Tribes program for developing communities. These four elements are mutual respect, right to pass, appreciation, and no put-downs. For us to have meaningful discussions and debates about some of the controversial topics we're discussing, it's important that all of us adhere to these community norms. Within an atmosphere of trust, I will endeavor as your instructor to create a climate where you feel challenged at an appropriate level. If a task or topic is something you're not comfortable with, you have the right to pass on discussing or sharing as needed. Stein and Emil refer to five elements of online communities. Place is important. Adult learners voluntarily create places that are virtual or otherwise where problems they need to solve are situated. These learning spaces emerge in organizations and communities. It's my job as the facilitator to create the context for you to identify the problems you wish to research. Think how the place for each of you will be unique while you watch the videos asynchronously, yet you will come together for tutorial in the same place to discuss what you've learned. So this neutral space is owned by the learning community. Second, the learning content needs to relate to the community's daily life. Your learning community and tutorial will allow you the chance to situate your learning in a context that makes sense given your life and work situation. It is a lab for adults' life concerns. The process of learning and community means we generate knowledge together through our unique understandings and opinions of the topics at hand. Knowledge needs to be locally produced. Remember, this doesn't necessarily mean geographically local. In online learning, we cross time and space boundaries. That's why it's challenging for us to connect on a human level in the same way as in a face-to-face -face classroom. Learning communities can be very powerful structures. Learning online, you will still see personalities and power and social structures emerging. We're not homogeneous human beings, despite that illusion that the technology gives us an equal playing field. There are always psychological and social factors in each of our lives that will affect what we bring to this online community. And finally, from me to we. Learning is social and communal as opposed to individual. So let yourself and your learning be shaped collectively by the problems and issues you define and discuss. Here are some points to ponder from Stein and Nimmo. By learning in community, adults create a temporal space for constructing individual and collective knowledge. They develop rules for exchanging ideas, data, and solutions. The learning community may assume an identity beyond that of each of its original members. Learning communities are learning labs where adults come together based on their experiences with real issues. The challenge is to encourage formation of learning communities without having the instructor, myself, interfere in that learning or using expert knowledge to direct the group in its struggle to learn. What are some of the differences we see in online communities? Tom Stewart, a psychologist studying the interaction between people and technology, jokes that sometimes we worry that computers are locking people in their rooms and destroying society, or that the isolation we feel as humans is the fault of technocrats. And yet, online communities seem to contradict this simplistic analysis. 
online communities can be a significant source of help and social support. And whether we like it or not, our emotion plays an important part in how we let technology control us. Think to yourself, what are some examples of ways that online communities have influenced how you feel, either positively or negatively? Some examples I can think of would include cyberbullying, online shopping, online gambling, the way that our language and communication has changed, chat rooms, texting, or e-dating. Can you think of any more? How we view ourselves and others is in large part shaped by how we let technology into our lives. I can prove it to you by asking how many people have you texted today, tweeted or blogged, and did you turn your cell phone off before watching this video clip? But are online relationships the same as real relationships? Do your Facebook friends function as your real friends do? And what kinds of privacy or personal safety issues exist in online relationship building? There's real power here, and it's important to acknowledge how we use it. It's like a new term of people now. Like now you have friends and you have a Facebook friend. Yeah, right. They're <laughs> like more acquaintances, I guess. Like right. It's kind of more like, oh yeah, a Facebook friend doesn't really mean so much. Right, right. Uh, it's the kind of person that you only see still shots of doing things that they want you to see. Right, you know right. what I mean? The fun stuff, the greatest hits, that, that front page of your Facebook profile is your greatest hits. Right. Usually online communities let people keep in touch more easily with friends, particularly those at a distance, and because of the widespread influence of mobile phones, we're now never alone. Imagine the psychological impact of that. You are no longer limited to going to your local school or university. You can take this course from anywhere in the world. Think how much that has expanded your online community. How will that affect your global and cultural awareness? How has it affected your personal relationships? How many of us have been out with friends in a face-to-face -face setting when they just must answer a text? Has the face-to-face -face part of our social lives changed or been made less important? We can stay in touch and know everything that is happening in our world, even if we don't want to know. I mean, how much input can human beings take? Online communities depend on human-machine interaction, more recently called human-computer interaction, and Kikir reviews the book The Handbook of Human-Machine Interaction, a human-centered design approach. Previously, humans designed computer systems to be automated so that the machine had the leading part and the human was the operator. You, for example, are the operator as you watch this clip you can pause or play at will, so it appears that you have the power to drive the technology. As another example, in our tutorial session, we are dependent on Adobe to work to have our community discussions, so our ability to sustain and create relationships depends on the technology working. Or does it? If our learning management system fails to work, we, the creative humans, will simply find another way that works. We may feel the emotion of frustration so is it controlling the tone of our class, or are we? But sure, we still have the power. And finally, reflect on this example. How powerless would you feel if I suggested you go without your cell phone or any access to the internet for a whole week? I can literally hear the virtual gasps. This is really the technology version of the chicken or the egg. Do humans control technology, or does technology shape how we relate to each other? I'm sure you'll have to go answer your cell phone, urgently text someone, or send an email before responding to that question. At the beginning of a relationship, you don't feel completely comfortable with the person, so the easiest way to communicate has to be through texting. Just another aspect of communicating. But I mean, Facebook can really, really help relationships. It keeps things really simple. I try and stay in contact with them as much as possible. Because it's just so much easier to communicate, to talk, just to flirt. That's a great way to build a relationship. You need to know the person that you're going out with. Take a minute to brainstorm two lists humans are better at versus machines are better at. Maybe the bigger question is this comment from Kikir. In some contrast to the classical notion about human-computer interaction, where a user interacts with an application, people may find themselves as parts of intractable systems, the function of which may be partly or fully unknown to them. So how will you be successful in this online course? 
Stewart states that both sociability and usability are intertwined. In other words, commitment to an online community is critical if the community is to be sustainable. Here are the synthesis questions for this video. How has technology affected my relationships both personally and professionally? What must-sees will I need to feel that I am an important part of our online learning community? What barriers to learning might I face learning asynchronously and how can I help myself to stay on track? How will I use the tutorial time to focus my learning on the problems I wish to investigate in this course? In the spirit of the digital moment I ask you to submit each week, here's a bit about me. Currently, I'm the director of the BED program at UOIT and I teach physical education to intermediate senior students, core methods, adult education, authentic assessment, dance, and a few others. I'm also a slightly eccentric dog owner who has three Maltese that cannot be virtually walked. So this video will end here as I succumb to the very real pressure of my puppies.